In today's video, guys, we are going to be doing our drywall taping and all the prep that's necessary before we start doing our, well, we're gonna be hanging wallpaper again. I know everybody's not a big fan of wallpaper, but here's the deal. This house is built like this, okay? Every joint is a mess, so no matter how you drywall this thing, you're gonna have weird corners. Using drywall only and then painting or adding tile can be a real nightmare. If you have wallpaper in your repertoire, then you can use it to hide a whole slew of mistakes, especially if you don't use a horizontal line pattern. <laughs> so in our case, we were picking out something in the way of, uh, it's like a floral, okay? It's very, it's very Florida theme. I think they're just a bunch of palm trees. All right, I'll let my wife make those kinds of decisions. But what I'm doing is I'm just trimming back my foam that I use to fill all my gaps. Okay, now I have a backing there that I can tape into. This is really convenient at the end of the day. Long day, you put all your drywall up and tomorrow you're gonna tape, let's say. This is the best way to do it. Don't start the day with um, uh, making a 20 minute mud and filling all your gaps and waiting for it to all set up and all the mess that goes with it. Finish your day with a can of spray foam. And then when it's time to drywall, it's really super simple. Here we go. Done, okay? Same thing here. Getting all these angles was a mess. I ended up not getting a factory joint next to a factory joint. It doesn't always work out. So you can fill it with foam so you're ready to tape. Piece of cake. And with an Ulfa knife, it's really easy to trim, especially if it's not a corrugated blade. I'm really loving this all of a sudden. <laughs> Yeah, but well, here's the corner where I really can't wait to show you. This is the corner that was just like out to lunch. I didn't use a lot of foam here. It's just a lot of corner. Oh, bah. Next blade. Ay, 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 ay. That's not a problem. It's not gonna slow me down because I always work with three or four knives. Why well, have one when you can have three or four? There we go. Oh, nuts. A bit of a hole anyway, huh? Look at that. So I got a quarter inch on this side and a half inch on this side, but it meets at the top and the bottom. It just bows like this, both walls. Unbelievable. Without foam, this would take me about a, an hour to putty up with drywall tape and paper. Okay, let's not get reckless and put your hand through that knife. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Okay, now that that's done, let's get out the drywall tape and the mud. So when you're doing drywall work, you want to just know the end from the beginning a little bit so you know what you need to tape and what you don't. Uh, for instance, the top gap here, I'm not taping that. I'm going to be using a trim all the way around the room. It's already above parts of this and it's in everywhere else in the house. And I don't think I can escape it just because of the nature of the, uh, the way it's already affected the ceiling. So I've come back with a thicker piece of drywall than before so I can cover that nasty gap. This up here. By putting the same trim back, I, I solved the problem with the damage and all that other stuff. It'll just be a lot faster for me to finish. So, uh, that's it for that. No worries. There we go. This mud has already been pre-mixed with water. We're going to show you a couple of quick tricks here. But at the end of the day, if you really want to learn how to drywall, I've got a couple of masterclass videos, a couple of drywall cheat videos if you haven't seen them yet. We'll put the video links in the description. Because a person who knows how to tape, all right, is completely independent of almost every other trade. Everything else is measuring and cutting on the right tool for the job. This is an art form. And once you've mastered it, well, let's just say, you'll never have to hire a contractor again. Okay. Yeah, it's just a matter of putting mud on both sides. Okay. There we go. And bedding the tape into the mud. 
Now today, everybody is seeing the videos and the short reels and TikTok and everywhere else. And there's a lot of drywallers out there posting content. They've got all those really fancy materials. Um, homeowners are never going to have those tools. But the truth is, that's not how the trade started. The trade started using this, a four inch knife. For decades, this was the tool of choice for doing drywall work because it was about the craftsmanship. It was about the skill. It was about the finished product. And the guys who did this job took a lot of pride in their work. All right. And then at some point, we just didn't have enough people around who took pride in their work. New home construction had to find a way to do things faster. So they started inventing these commercial tools that made the project really easy. But they don't bed the tape. Bedding the tape is this. It's taking the knife and pressing it into the mud. Okay? And getting rid of all the excess. That's bedding it. All right? Using your knife to create a perfect 90 degree angle. And it can take a couple of passes to get there. That's bedding your tape. What they do with those commercial tools is they just kind of lay tape in mud. <laughs> I can walk in any house in the world that's been made in the last 10 years, pull out a knife, measure four feet down from the ceiling, cut the paint, and run that tape off the wall, 100 feet down the wall. It's not, it's not really attached to anything, it's just floating in the mud. So it drives me nuts. And I would rather see people go back to the art of bedding their tape properly and getting a better result than using all those machines. I personally feel that anybody who's using those machines is delivering an inferior product. All right. Here we go. Now the next step here for this project, after we're done taping, of course is wallpaper. And then, on the other wall behind me, we're going to tile floor to ceiling. I know, it's exciting. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, and you want to make sure you don't miss out on that action, hit the subscribe button, ring your bell for notifications. Bottom line is, there's just a whole lot of content creators out there nowadays. And uh, you've got to kind of pick your poison, who you want to see, where you're getting your value. If you want to learn how to fix your own house, then you should subscribe to the channel because it could be months and months and months down the road before YouTube reminds you to watch one of my videos. And you're going to miss out on all the rest of the production of this double wide trailer. And you're going to miss out ah, on a lot of really great content that's going to help you save and make a lot of money on your home. There we go. Boom. Now, you can only add mud to one side of an inside corner at a time. Just a note, those fancy machines that you see on the TikToks, they do their inside corners both sides at the same time. And they're never sharp. You end up with a round corner. And that ain't no fun, guys. This tool makes a sharp corner. So you do a four inch and then a six inch knife, and then you do the other side with both, both knives. It takes four days to tape a corner properly. That's probably one of the reasons why wallpaper lost a lot of favor. Because wallpaper requires a pretty decent taping job. <laughs> there we go. I know. Some of you, this is the first time you've ever seen somebody use expansion foam in a corner before they taped. And you're going, hey, that really works. <laughs> Just because I'm a traditionalist when it comes to drywalling doesn't mean I don't take advantage of it. Great idea. I first tried this about 20 years ago. It absolutely blew my mind. It was at the end of the day, on a big job and I was like, oh, there's got to be a way to fill that so it dries when I'm not here. So 
So we tried the foam on one corner, and that was the last time I ever filled my corners with quick set again, unless it's a small job and I'm just trying to get done and in and out in the same day. Whenever I'm gonna do a big job, I always use foam in the corners because it just works so well. It takes all of 10 minutes to run around an entire basement and fill all the corners up. Or if you use the quick fill, you gotta mix your own mud the next day. You gotta do all your filling. Multiple layers of tape, this and that and the other. It can take an hour, hour and a half just to get to the point where then you're waiting for the mud to dry. That's enough to drive you crazy. There we are. the corner. There we go. Perfect every time. Because we're doing wallpaper, believe it or not, it kind of requires me to do a better job on the drywall than it would if I was doing paint. There we go. This nasty butt joint is easily filled. So we bed it by pressing it in, okay? And then we wet it. And that's the secret to success. Bed it and then you wet it. We're not adding a lot of mud. We're just making sure we go from dry to wet tape. As soon as you do that, you'll guarantee you won't get bubbles in your tape. But for everybody who's been struggling with that, bed it and then wet it. Pressure, right? See the wrinkle? When it's wet, it wrinkles. Here we go. Yeah, we need to need a few more inches of that paper here. Never a problem going paper over paper. You don't need too much. So. Now we bed it, and now we wet it, okay? And then we'll clean it too, because we wanna make sure we keep this as thin as possible. Remember, we're creating a bump. Whenever you have a bump, you've gotta stretch it out to make it look smooth to the naked eye. Okay? So don't leave extra material on here. And if every time you're done working with your mud, you leave the wall clean, you don't have to sand between coats. The only guys that ever tell you to put mud on and then sand are the guys who sell the mud. <laughs> they want you putting on more mud than you need because hey, they'd rather sell you five boxes for your basement job than three. Well, there we go. After that, all we gotta do is fill the nail holes, all right? If they don't stick out, they don't make any noise. That makes noise, it's sticking out. That's just a matter of Grabbing your drill or a screwdriver and sinking it ahead. Okay, that one too. That one didn't make any noise, but you could see the head. You shouldn't see the head, you should see mud. Okay. Yeah, see that? You can still see the head. So when I come back and I go sand it with my 
my sanding disc. I'm going to sand a little bit of mud off. I'm going to have a screw exposed, and that's guaranteed to rust. All right, here we go. That's about all I got to teach you today. All right, that was first coat. Um, we're going to jump into the second coat, the final coat, the sanding, the preparation, the drywall primer, and the paint, and then the wallpaper in this video, finally. There's a bunch of tricks to teach you as we go along. But let's just say we'll see you tomorrow, and we'll hit this with the next shot. Cheers.